was pouring that oil because she was going to need a divine connection up the road and around the corner. She poured it now while she had the strength to pour it. My grandmother used to say, you better die to God while you're young because it takes strength to die. That's why you see people old and mean and grouchy and, and, and just cantankerous and ain't never got nothing good. You got people that ain't never got nothing good to say about people. They ain't never got no compliment for nobody. They don't know how to be happy for nobody. And that's why whatever you shut down the spirit realm for somebody else, that's why yours can't be free. And you got to ask God to forgive you today and start being complimentary when you see things are awesome, when you see things are nice. Because why are you expecting what you don't give? How are you expecting for people to praise your works when you praise nobody's? I'm preaching today. This is a word today. This is a real word today. Are you hearing God today? And I know some of y'all sitting there going, wow. That's why you got to watch your mouth. You got to watch your mouth when you let negativity spew out of your mouth. You got to watch your mouth when you don't know all the facts and you don't know what you're talking about. Because the devil trying to trip your tongue up. Because you can't use the same tongue to, to prophesy and then turn around and use the same tongue to destroy. That's a split tongue. A split tongue is the tongue of a snake. That's a tongue that has a twofold purpose. God can't use that. When the Holy Ghost fell, the Bible said, and it set up on them as a tongue of fire. In other words, the tongue was sold. It wasn't split. Is that a tongue of deception? Is that a tongue that don't know which way it needs to go? And you're going to remember this because if God's going to use your mouth to keep speaking the creativity into your dream and keep speaking the power of movement into your dream, then when you get ready to say something negative, you're going to catch yourself. You're going to catch yourself. You know why? Because when it's time to speak something positive and you done already spoke something negative, watch this. If it's like this, and it's time for you to speak something positive and you done already spoke something negative. It may be coming from your throat, coming down through one pipe. But when it gets to the end, it don't know which way to go because it's following your spirit. It's not just following your words. So if your spirit is in an off place and your spirit is in a place of, of, of being unrepentant. And if your spirit has been in a place of negativity, you are speaking. Positive words, but by the time they get to the end, your words are being split. And you're not hitting the target. And so what you're getting is a little bit of this and a little bit of that. What you're getting is a little breakthrough over here and everything shut down over here. Are you hearing me? Is there anybody listening? This woman poured that oil. And she said, now, my brother's dead. Because the Bible said she was the woman that poured the oil. That's why she got the revelation first. He got you on this for a reason. He got you right here at three with me for a reason. You got to start cleaning out your house. You got to start cleaning out your ears. You got to start. I'm serious, y'all. I feel this. You got to start getting people from around you. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear nothing. Because you can't be but one person. You got to bring all your thoughts in. No, you can't tell me that. That ain't none of my business. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear nothing that I have to repent for later. Because silence gives consent. You sit there and let people talk crazy stuff. Talk crazy stuff about the pastor. Talk crazy stuff about this. Talk crazy stuff about that. Y'all supposed to be friends? No. I say all the time, my niece got ready to go to high school. She said, well, auntie, what should I do? I said, don't ever let nobody come and talk to you about nobody. And when they start talking about somebody, either you get up and walk away or you just don't say nothing. I said, because when you do that, the minute you agree, you take a side. And then long after you finish with it, people still wearing it out and they won't let you get out the club. Uh-huh, somebody's stuck in a club. I, I hear that. They won't let you out the club because you done said so much and did so much that you now a part of them. And our self-esteem sometimes is so low that we want accepting so bad that we will go along with stuff we know is wrong. You know it's wrong. You know God is not pleased with that. Mm -mm. I don't
don't talk about people. And everybody that know me know I hate that spirit. I don't like talking. No, you can't. I don't talk about people. That's why I don't do back rooms. That's why when people invite me to preach, I come in with my coat on. And by the time they say, the pastor want to say bye, I got my coat back on. And I'm on my way out the door in the hallway. Oh, we prepare some food for you. No, wrap it up. Thank you very much. But I don't do back rooms because you start out eating. You start out at the birthday party. You start out just sitting there drinking coffee. It's about the Lord at first. And then it turns into, well, have you ever heard of so-and-so's ministry? They got a powerful ministry. Have you ever heard of so-and-so's ministry? Then it take that little turn. Well, I heard they really going through something. Here it goes. Here it goes. And that's why I don't do back rooms. Because you never know who's your lifeline. You never know who God going to use to speak a word of life in you. And if you done set up and talked about people, when that time come that God has chosen them to be a blessing to you, you too convicted to receive it. You got your head down because you can't hardly receive your help because behind closed doors, you were not their help. And you got to decide today, I'm going to shut my mouth. I ain't got nothing to say. If I ain't got nothing good to say, I'm not going to say nothing at all because this tongue right here, this tongue got to prophesy. This tongue got to get me to destiny. This tongue right here, this tongue got to get my dream into manifestation. This tongue right here got to get my clothing line in the stores. Got to get my makeup line in the stores. This tongue right here. See, you don't value your gift. And it goes back to that word value. You don't value it. Because if you valued it, you would protect it. And you would protect it with more than just, I want to protect my secrets on the paper. I'm protecting my gift because I'm watching my tongue. My God, my God, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? No, we got we got to do this right. You can't go up wrong. Cause you build a building wrong, it's gonna come down. If you don't build the foundation right, it's not gonna last. You gonna get moments and spurts. That's why I don't I don't I just I just watch. I just watch. When you know people is building stuff on wrong motives and they're building things, they're doing stuff with wrong motives. I just watch and I see people come and I see people go because I know that God is a motive God. Mm -hmm. I preached the message one time that God going to get you for your intent. I know what we're doing, but the Lord's interest in what is your intent and why you want this done. And you wanting your dream to come to pass can't be a weapon against your enemy. It can't be, see, I told y'all. It cannot be, it, it cannot be. Y'all didn't think I was going to make it, but watch this. No, it ain't going to come to pass. Mm -mm, it ain't going to happen. Until you change your motive. Until your motive becomes, I want my life to glorify God. And I want this, whatever God is doing, to be a blessing to somebody. Not bless me so I can show them that because when, when, when y'all didn't help me, the Lord did it anyhow. No, he's not going to bless it. He's not going to bless it with that spirit. He not going to bless it with that spirit because then that's a spirit of unforgiveness. Then you have not forgiven. I had a woman who write me on one of the emails and said, my mother is blind. And I started turning on at three with me, with my mother. And my mother came to me and said, you know what? I forgive now. God done for con convicted me and I forgive. Are you understanding what God is saying? You're going to have to have the right motive for God to bless you. And it can't be for no other reason. It can't be because you want to be famous. It can't be none of that. It's got to be because this is an assignment that you gave me. And I want to fulfill this assignment. And God, if you don't give me but 50 people, then I'm going to treat them 50 people like they 5,000. If God don't give you but 10 people, you need to learn how to cultivate your relationship with those 10 people like it's 10,000. Because until you learn the power of letting it go, you can't be successful in your dream. You think Donald Trump and all them people hold on to all that stuff people say about them? They don't. You think they go home thinking about that? They going on to their next venture. Angelina Jolie is working on her next movie while we sitting here talking about her. 
Are you getting what God is saying? Kanye West, all them people, all them people out there, they're not studying y'all. They, they not studying what nobody say. They really not. But what the devil is doing, he's tricking you out of your promise. Because he knows as long as your tongue sits in a negative place, you can never produce nothing positive. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. You know the scripture. Every time you open your mouth up, either you are causing something to die or you are causing something to live. Either you are constructing something or you are destroying something. There is no gray shade. There is no in between. I want the Lord to bless everything I do. I want the favor of God to be on it. I want God to be with me. And the only way that I can ha that can happen, I have to stay in a repentive spirit before the Lord. I have to ask him daily to forgive me. I have to ask him daily to turn the searchlight on. And if you find anything in me that shouldn't be, you take it out and you cleanse me because I want to be right, I want to be saved, and I want to be whole. Anybody else going with me? Because I want success, but I want holy too. My God, he gave me that. He gave me that. You know what he told me? He said, the reason why people want me to be awesome, the reason why people want me to be this awesome God, this mighty God, this God of everything. He said, the reason why they want all of that, because they only want to acknowledge the part of me that benefits them. The part that they can use. If God is mighty, I'm mighty. If God is awesome, I'm awesome. If God is strength, I'm strength. He said, but the majority of the people are trying to stay away from that word, God is holy. Because when you start talking about him being holy, now you're talking about a change that has to take place in you. And we want his attributes. We want the rest of his personality. We want his might. We want his strength. We want his supernatural power. But we don't want his holiness. And you're not going nowhere without his holiness. It's a requirement. It's one of the prerequisites to success. I am holy. Holy means I am set apart. Set apart means I don't do it the way other people do it. And that's why I run by myself. That's the reason why. I don't care what people say about me. She stuck up. She did. She, and Juanita Bynum is an untouchable. She just, no, Juanita Bynum is protective. Juanita Bynum is not stupid. Juanita Bynum is guarding her life and guarding her heart from foolishness. And I, I, can, I can send to the mal law. I don't have to get up on you to know you. I got discernment. And when that thing go off in my spirit, and said, not this one. Not this one. I believe it. And I follow it. I don't override the spirit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on, give me some more love right there. Let me see some hearts. That's it right there. You know. You know. You know when you meet them people. And they seem like they got it all together. And then you get that check right. It's right here. Some of y'all want to know where it is. It's, right, it's in that upper gut, right? Right? Oh, press where your real is. I know that's where mine is. Right there where your real is. It's a something that comes up right here. And it's almost like somebody got their finger holding it in that spot and you just wish they would let you go. And you don't know what it is, but I don't care. Everybody else is just loving them. And everybody else is talking about how awesome they are. And everybody else is talking about how anointed they are. But there's something right here that's saying to you, not this one. Stay away from this one. Don't, mm -mm. don't do it. And I've learned how to trust my spirit. And some of y'all, you've been beaten down so much. You've been told so much what you're not. That you don't even trust your own spirit. You got one. And a lot of times you haven't been wrong. But you overrode the spirit. And that's how you ended up in trouble. I don't go over that thing. When I feel that thing, I be like, uh-uh. Oh, but they want you to come. Mm -mm. Oh, she bought you this and she bought. No. But probably she just so. Mm -mm. I don't care what you say. 
I know what my spirit is saying. Then up the road around the corner, they come back. You know that lady that you said, guess what happened? No, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me. Because my spirit forewarned me. My spirit foretold me. Don't do that. Don't do that. And God's going to turn your discernment up. He's going to fine tune your discernment. After this program, he's going to fine tune your discernment. I don't care what they say. But she always by herself. She always, and I don't like she want to go to dinner nobody. She don't want to run. Oh, I, I, we had this program over here and she didn't come. No, because I don't do foolishness. I don't do the foolery. I just don't. I just don't. I don't have time for it. Time is precious to me. Time is valuable. And that's why you got to be careful who you spend time with. Because you're giving them something you can never get back. You sit down talking to somebody for two hours of foolishness, you will never get that time back. And time is valuable. Time is money. Are you hearing God? Time is money. You can't sit down with everybody. You can't run with everybody. You can't hang out with everybody. You can't do what everybody do. You're different. If you're on this cash, you're different. If you're sitting here watching me, God is trying to help you understand you are different. And you cannot be a messy person. You cannot be. Because you're in the, you the midst of producing a dream. Can't be looking at all that foolishness. I don't. Talking to people, like, I'm going to watch this show, but I'm not. You don't watch that show? No, I don't. Everybody watch that show. I said, everybody don't watch it because I don't watch it. Well, why you don't watch it? I said, because I'm not going to sit and let the devil show me how to act a fool. I'm not going to sit and watch something where the devil is showing me how to be a conniving woman. How to be somebody that, that, that learned how to perfectly lie. No. I don't want that in my spirit. Okay, I ain't going to get no hearts on that. I ain't gonna get no hearts on that one, so I might as well pray and just go and let y'all go. No, I'm not doing that. I don't wanna watch that. I don't wanna watch them programs. Every time you turn around, it's a mess. And then you're, ooh, what's gonna happen next? And they on the screen making money and making millions. And you sitting there carving out an hour and two hours of your life, and you sitting there broke. Watching somebody act the fool on the screen and make money off of your attention. While they put that junk down in your spirit. And we want to call ourselves, talk about I want to be awesome. No, holy. Which means I don't want that which is not holy. I don't want that, that which does not agree with God in my spirit. Say what you want. Say what you want. No, the Lord, listen, let me tell you something. And I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but I have. Because, you know, the Lord delivered me from a cussing spirit. Ooh, I was Della Reese's niece. Will cuss you out. What? <laughs> what? I mean, ever since I was little. I was saying them, babe, I was that one on the playground. Nine, ten years old will go in on you, would go into the special box in a minute and get one. That's what I call it, the special box. Don't make me go to the special box and get one because I will go get you one. I will go get you a few. And the Lord delivered me. He said, no, I'm calling you to be an evangelist. This is before I became a prophet. He said, you can't do that. Cursing and blessing can't come out the same mouth. Good Lord, I'm talking to somebody. I don't see nothing wrong with you. You just get mad sometimes. No, the Bible said, he that curses, curses, curses his own life to the bone. And you wonder why you can't get your stuff out. Because you have cursed yourself to the bone. You have put a curse on you by cursing. Oh, my God. When he showed me that, he said, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. And the devil be trying to try me sometime and I have to put my fist in my mouth like, mm -mm, nope, nope. I will not go to the special box. My tongue is holy before the Lord. I am intelligent. I know how to be angry and sin not. I know how to say what I need to say without dropping a bomb on you. 
No, I'm serious, y'all. I'm dead serious. I will cuss you out. You, it, it would make you feel like I jumped on you and beat you up. When I tell you, you would get it. You would get it hard. And God deliver me. Now, what? Now, here, here go me. Because I'm not going to talk about y'all. Because y'all be, y'all won't do it. Y'all won't come on through the gate. You won't come on through the gate and admit it. You want to stand out there on the other side of the fence and say, oh, wow, look it up. No, come in the gate. Come in the gate. Because we're talking about being holy now. We're talking about being holy now. And that would be me. And so, you know, the Lord delivered me. And then, you know, all these different programs. You know, used to be a time where you watch TV and wasn't no cussing. They would bleep hell. Like, bleep. Somebody would say something, bleep, 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 bleep. Now they let you cuss on TV like a sailor. So here go me. Well, I'm just going to watch this because you know it. Dumb. And I'm just watching, 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 watching. And they cussing, 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 all that cussing. My ears is hearing that cussing. All that stuff is getting back down in my spirit. And somebody said something to me and I went in. I was like, what the? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My cussing demon is back. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? And he said, that's what I'm talking about. You let that jump get down in your spirit. You let that stuff get down in your ears. I'm not hearing y'all. The devil will let that stuff get down in your spirit. Yes, he will. And before you know it, you will be back cussing. And that's why I can't watch all that stuff. I can't watch that kind of stuff. I can't watch shows where people, uh-uh, give me the Andy Griffin show. Hey, man, somebody. Give me Andy Griffin. Give me the Cosby show. No, give me Mayberry. What's my other shows? Um... Mayberry and them, uh, give me the facts is right, uh, all of that. Give me, um, uh, about the kids in college, uh, the world, whatever it is. What they call it? Saved by, Save by the bell in a different world. Give me some stuff that talks my language. Don't have me sitting up watching television with a bunch of sex crazy stuff and a bunch of cussing going on and stuff all down in your spirit. You need to repent for that. He said, set no evil thing before your eyes. Now, I don't be sitting up there watching TV and watching people humping and carrying on. No, I'm single. No, I'm single. And I love God. And I'm trying to please God. So why would I watch something and let somebody show me what I'm missing? And you ain't missing nothing. It's a five-minute thrill. Because when you get through doing all that humping, when you get through with all of that, you got to live with that person. You got to deal with all of their stuff. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. But television try to paint it like it's a moment in time. Like, look at how romantic this is. But we all know the truth. And it's to get you left in your brain. I don't turn that on. That's turned off. I don't have a husband. I don't have a boyfriend. And I don't have a girlfriend either. Let me not get it twisted. No. No. And until that becomes the will of the Lord for my life. Until God says to me. I found a mate for you. I don't entertain that. I'm not looking for anybody. The Bible says he that findeth a wife. Find it for good faith and obtain the favor from the Lord. And the only way my mate will have favor, he got to find me. I can't go find him. Are you hearing what God is saying? No, I can't get it all twisted up. Because I'm working on a vision. I'm working on a vision. I'm working on something that God gave me. I'm working on a dream that God gave me. And it doesn't involve cussing. My makeup line don't require me to put curse words on the back for you to know how to use it. My candle line doesn't require me to talk foul for you to use it. Are you hearing me? So why would I entertain all of that? I want to entertain stuff that's going to feed my spirit. And today, Father, we repent for all of that. Today, we repent for having a way with spirit. Today, we repent for having our spirits to go after something that's not you. Today, we say we sorry. And we're not going to come in here with our hands lifted up and worshiping you like we haven't wronged you. Because we have offended the Holy Spirit that's in us that's trying to help us. We have offended our gifts. We have offended the charge that God has given us. Because we've tried to mix it with something else. 
that wasn't faith. That's why they couldn't produce because the Bible said it wasn't mixed with faith. It was mixed with all these crazy television programs. It was mixed with all that stuff that's going on in your spirit. I hear people on here all the time writing me letters saying, uh, how do I get it? Because just, I'm just so confused because it just seems like it's a lot coming in. And that's why you got to shut the trap door. You got to start today emptying a lot of stuff out and say, nope, I'm shutting all the trap doors. And anything that don't involve God improving my character, bringing me to a state of holiness and producing my dream and giving me direction as to where my dream should go, I can't take that in my spirit. I can't. I can't. I want to be holy. I want to be ready when he come. Mm -hmm, I do. Anybody else out there want that? Anybody else out there want it? Because I want it for you. 